Hello, my dear viewers. Another video from the Speaking Red. And yes, finally, some more about the Pollyon Tracker. Now, this time I'm going to keep it short, people, because the last two videos were absurd long. So, I guess that could be annoying, <clears throat> but I tried to go over a lot of details in those two videos. In this video, uh, this is what happened. First of all, I have uh, created several tracks. I think I've created five, six or even seven tracks on this. But each time I wasn't satisfied with the end result, so I didn't do anything with it. I kept playing, 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 and then I just didn't, I, I just wasn't happy. I either uh, thought it was overproduced or I figured I was just using the gimmicks in the machine, which is normal in the beginning because this is as, as you know this is a very capable device has a lot of options a lot and what's uh, interesting uh, are all the effects that in patterns you can uh, create on tones by using the effects parameters and <clears throat> then going into all the things that you can do there as you know um, great options to just send one specific tone to the reverb um, using the high pass band pass uh, per tone to make that really variance in um, sound uh, that variance in um, yeah how do you call it um, sound involvement yeah, by by uh, by creating several notes with different um, LFO or uh, other filter values just after each other you can really create very, very nice floating landscapes of sounds that are emerging and evolving all the time lovely stuff um, <clears throat> so I went into all that stuff a lot um, you filter LFOs, panning LFOs, slices for samples um, the roll is very nice. That is so powerful. I've done a lot with it. And in the track I'm going to play at the end of this video, you will hear it if you know the device and if you know what roll is. Uh, so many different uh, ways to use roll here. Incredible. Um, <clears throat> even gone into gate length and micro move to position certain playing samples. Um, I've really done a lot of work, uh, I've put a lot of work into creating my own samples. Uh, of course I've downloaded some stuff from the internet, lo logically, uh, like uh, especially um, a couple of instruments actually, like uh, a lo-fi piano that I used in one of the tracks that you won't hear in the track for in today's track, uh, but also organs, uh, guitars, uh, but of course also drum loops, jungle loops, house loops, uh, techno loops, all that stuff, just to find that because I'm, you know, as an artist, I'm listening to what I'm doing and I base every decision on what I hear. So I download a lot of stuff and I try it out. And if it starts working for me, then I go on and create more of a try and create more of a track with it. And then still, I don't, I never know if it's going to be a track or I'm going to be disappointed anyway. Because often I'll build something and I have a couple of minutes uh, in the built up in the song and then. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's just not doing it for me anymore. It's just not cutting it. So I, I just stop and I start fresh, just start a fresh project. And that's, that's the fun thing here. Something that is, uh, of course, new for me in my current setup. Um, my current setup is, besides this gem, is uh, semi-modular. Um, which means that there's no projects to save and to come back to on another day. If you've changed parameters, then you've changed parameters. So you kind of destroyed what you were doing and went to do something new, which is what I'm used to. But of course, as I said in the earlier videos, um, I used to work a lot with um, MIDI sequencers on a computer. Uh, I used DAWs a lot in the, in the past. And then I came back to this because this to me is the perfect non-DAW, which is a DAW. If you know what I mean. And um, am I satisfied with this? Yes. Um, I do find, and that's what I was saying uh, already, I do find that um, I get lost in all the 
possibilities of the thing and then I just focus too much energy on the possibilities instead of focusing on the music I want to create. But that's actually, um, uh, how do you say, the, the curtains are opening slowly, if you know what I mean. So I've, I've, I more and more find my way, I know that, okay, I don't want to be, I don't want to lose myself in the effects sections. I really want to go for authentic sounds and samples, melodies, and then use those. Now the track you're going to hear is, I don't know what style I should call it. I think it's it's some kind of a, um, I wouldn't call it breakbeat because that's not what it is. And personally I have I have always had trouble with identifying styles in music. Well, classical music is easy to identify, but if you look at all the different sub-genres that were invented uh, around dance music, uh, for example, as, as this is a device very capable of making dance music, um, it's very hard because every now and then new styles pop up and then people invent new style names for them. So at some point I just don't know. So I don't know what I'm making. Um, I, I, let's call it dance music. If you want to know what the style of this track is, then it's probably, it sounds mostly, well, it resembles the style of the Prodigy in the years where they really gotten big uh, with the album The Fat of the Land. Uh, where the, the big tracks were, the, the big hits were that they created back then. Which I've always been a huge fan of, even though it has never been my style of music. But now that I'm working with this device, I find that um, different styles are coming from these same fingers, which really enjoyable. Now, um, in summary, um, I have uh, used in this track a couple of downloaded uh, beats, and I have sampled some of my synthesizers here, uh, which is the cool thing, of course, to do, to just use the gear you already have, sample it in, and then use it in a totally different way that you would in like a modular um, analog synthesizer. Uh, use it in a totally different way, <coughs> because in here the, 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 the instrument becomes something completely different from what it is when you play it as the instrument, if you can still follow me. And uh, yeah, am I happy with this? Yes, yes, I I love it. And there, there's there's a couple of things that Maybe I should add, uh, first of all, <coughs> all review videos I have seen so far, even my own, are filmed like this with the device flat on the table. And I can tell you from experience in the first 20 minutes, I knew that this was not going to work for me. Because if I sit at a table like this, the device is in front of me, then in five minutes my neck hurts from looking down. So what I do, but which doesn't look great in this video, is I... If I sit, if I want to work at my desk here, which is my music desk, then I just use, yes I do, a sweater that I roll up and lay under the device here so that it becomes slanted, which is then perfect because then I can easily see everything while sitting relatively straight. But the other cool thing is that I can take my music production out of this room and I've actually created several tracks on the couch downstairs. Just put my legs up on the couch, get a pillow for the device again to make it on an angle, to, to get it on an angle and, and watch at it properly and work with it properly without hurting my neck. And that's great. So it has brought something new. I can sit at somewhere else and create tracks. And this, this is something that I really enjoy. Outside that I have encountered one software bug which I could not reproduce, but it is there. At some point I was in the instrument section, I think I was in either effects or no, was it in effects? Yeah, it was here. And I couldn't switch back to, I was in release and I couldn't switch back to sustain arm, it wouldn't go. I could hold the button and change the value but it would always jump back to this one. I solved it by going into file saving what I was doing, switching it off, switching it back on. And the problem was gone. So there are still minor software bugs in this thing, but it is really minor. So yeah, let's uh, let's keep it uh, let's let's keep it at that. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed the track. It's something different from what you've heard last time, and I have no idea where I'm going. I'm trying to task myself for one of my future projects on this device by uh, with uh, creating 
some type of, let's say, somewhere between ambient and lo-fi uh, as a style. So I don't know if I'm gonna, I, I don't know if I'm gonna be happy with the results. So I don't know if you're ever gonna hear it, but I'm gonna try because I feel that's a real challenge for this device to do. Well, not the lo-fi bit, but especially the ambient bit is. Um, it is definitely more built for patterns and sequencing patterns and chaining patterns, which makes it different from the way that I uh, am used to making ambient tracks. Um, again, thanks for watching. Hope you're well. Um, hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for being here. Enjoy the trip. This was 